Hello everyone. I am Dr. Abdullah Al Ghamdi uh, from Saudi Arabia, currently working in uh, King Abdulaziz Medical City, Riyadh, uh, Ministry of National Guard uh, Health Affairs. Um, I am a board certified family physician from the University of Toronto, Canada, and uh, I'm a fellow of the College of Family Physicians of Canada. I also have a fellowship uh, in addiction medicine uh, from the University of Toronto and uh, the College of Family Physicians of uh, Canada. I'm a graduate of this great university, the University of Sheffield, and I have a postgraduate diploma in health informatics. And um, I have a master's degree in health professions education from uh, Maastricht University, the Netherlands, and I have a master's degree of uh, arts leading innovation and change uh, from uh, St. John's University in uh, United Kingdom. And currently uh, I am a uh, uh, doctoral candidate in business administration <clears throat> at Skema Business School uh, uh, in France and Business Science uh, Institute in, in Luxembourg. I am a board certified uh, physician executive uh, from the American Association for Physician Leadership. Um, I'm really very happy to be part of you. Um, I hold several posts, um, one as a consultant uh, family physician in uh, Ministry of National Guard uh, Health Affairs. I'm the past Associate Deputy Executive Directors of Clinical Affairs uh, in Department of Family Medicine, Central Region. And uh, I have been uh, the leader of uh, deploying the electronic uh, medical record system, which is one of the state of the arts in, in the region. Uh, in the Department of um, uh, Family Medicine in the Central Region uh, that belongs to the Ministry of National um, Guard Health Affairs. You can uh, visit uh, the link that I'm going to provide to you. Uh, this region extends from the north of Saudi Arabia to the south and uh, longitudinally it's 1,942 kilometers. Um, I have been leading um, several innovative uh, projects that have health informatics at the heart of it, data science at the heart of it. And uh, I was luckily the uh, leader, the clinical leader, um, uh, who helped the organization to attain uh, HEMS 7 level um, uh, in 2019 in the outpatient <clears throat> department uh, in the central region. Um, and the outpatient department is a huge uh, department uh, that includes primary care, family medicine, and uh, all kind of um, uh, specialty uh, care in the, in the city. Um, because of um, my contribution to health innovations um, uh, uh, that significantly impacted positively uh, the patient care in the organization and the way uh, professionals also uh, conduct healthcare. I have been awarded uh, by IFA, that is the International uh, Forum uh, on Healthcare Advancements in 2019 as one of the top 100 leaders who have contributed significantly uh, positively to healthcare. <clears throat> so I think this is enough uh, introduction uh, of myself to you. Um, I want to just say up front that the, the future for data science is just beginning. Um, and just to reassure you that the, the, um, the field is in high demand uh, from different uh, scientific and business and administrative disciplines. So I think if you are embarking on this uh, future, uh, don't think that that you're, you're, you're reaching a dead end. In fact, uh, this is just the beginning of explosion uh, in, in data science. So I'm saying this because really, if you look into the trend uh, from 2016 onward, um, the, the, the demand for data scientists is just increasing. And in the same time, the COVID-19 pandemic is um, introducing you a greater opportunity. You can see that many organizations around the world whether it is healthcare, whether it's uh, academic institutions, um, businesses, um, whatever, they are moving virtually. So with that, you can expect the amount of data that is being presented and these organizations are dealing with. Uh, this is a huge opportunity uh, for data scientists uh, like yourselves to um, 
uh, find the job that you that will meet your expectations and aspirations and also uh, present yourself to the employers as the asset that will help these institutions and organizations to achieve to achieve uh, their um, strategic objectives. So um, that's just up front. Uh, and I'm not saying this one just to make it like, you know, kind of easy for you. But in fact, I say this uh, because I, I know it and I have looked in the, the, the literature and I am um, even my doctoral subject also is uh, involved in some way in, 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 in digital uh, innovation and digital healthcare. So <clears throat> that's there is no doubt uh, that you have a bright future. Uh, so just stick to that. Um, I'm going to just go over a few questions that, that um, are presented um, uh, to me. And I hope that you find the answers useful and uh, up to your expectations. And the first question that I want to address here is, how did you develop your application and prepare for the interview? Um, I would say that I'm a clinician. When I, when I presented myself to the organization, um, I first looked at this organization. If, if it is the one that would meet my uh, professional uh, career objectives, that is very important. I don't think that you want to first satisfy the employer. Um, look at if you are the perfect fit in that organization or in that job uh, that you're applying for. So that, that's number one. So I made sure that this is the organization really I want to work for. And I made it clear that, you know, um, I have a greater uh, chance to develop myself in this organization more than other organizations. So that's what I did. And the second thing, I prepared my CV after reading in depth about the organizations, about its mission, vision, strategic objectives, its values, and what kind of professionals that, that they're looking for. Um, so I have read a lot about the organization. I made sure that I am the right person for them. And uh, I also made sure that this organization particularly is the one that would satisfy my um, uh, career objectives. And that's the most important thing. Uh, so. It's not just only you want to make sure that you satisfy the employers. You want to make sure also that the employer uh, would meet your uh, career uh, objectives. That is essential. Um, and so the if you make that and um, you go and read about how to write um, effective CV, um, curriculum vitae, then you are grasping the key ingredients uh, to get the job that you want. So um, I reviewed the effective, like I reviewed many articles about how to write effective CV. I've uh, shown my CV to some of my colleagues and you know, some of my seniors and they said, well, this is perfect. Well, this CV is going to stand out. And I still remember like you know, when I put my CV, it was, it was uh, the day that I applied to this organization. Like, I applied at 10 o'clock. Um, I was called at 11 o'clock to get interviewed. And then I just made it at 4 p.m. that day. And uh, I went out of the office um, of the employer and I know that I got the job. And that's simply because I thoroughly looked at this organization, what they want, and I trained myself how to um, really make sure that what I have written in my CV is what they got. That's important. You gotta have to answer this, um, the evidence that Whatever, whatever you've written in your CV is actually you. Very important. Um, preparing for the interview, again, the same thing. You'll have to practice it. Go ahead. Call your colleagues. Um, ask your teacher. Um, whatever there's a chance to make an interview, go for it. Uh, and I am willing, really, if you're... Um, you want to do, like, a Skype interview and uh, you want me, like, you know, to... Uh, conduct some mock interviews with you, I'm willing to do that. I'm not presenting myself as an expert, but I have done um, hundreds and hundreds of interviews. And the last one was yesterday through the uh, Microsoft Teams. So we, you can do that, to practice it, practice doing interviews. That is very important. Um, I'm gonna jump to the sec second question, which your experience after getting the job. I can just say it in a nutshell. 
it was fantastic experience. Because as I said in the in my the introduction, I was the leader of many important critical projects. Data science was at the heart of it. It was at the heart of it. And then later on, I was the leader of deploying uh, our own business intelligence dashboards. And I was trained in it. So it was, it was really all in all, I can't ask for more. Um, because when it comes to data science, it, I mean, the limit is your imagination. Uh, you can develop yourself and abstract yourself even higher to any level. But my advice to you really is uh, don't focus only on the, uh, on the, uh, the processes, but, but you need to even think beyond that. Um, what I mean is that you have to think of the people dealing with data and develop yourself there. So, and um, again, the, 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 the data science in itself mostly skewed, especially in healthcare, towards quantitative uh, data. So I want you really to approach data science in the whole perspective. That is the quantitative, qualitative, and mixed uh, data and how you make sense of them, how you retrieve them, how you analyze them, how you present them, and how you, you really convince the decision maker that this is the right decision to make based on, uh, on the data. So. Another question that, that comes uh, in mind is COVID-19 pandemic um, and the impact on uh, probably your career. And as I said in the beginning, in fact, this is a greater chance uh, for people who are pursuing career in uh, data science to, um, uh, to just like keep uh, behind your uh, choice, uh, develop yourself, in fact, many businesses, including in healthcare, uh, will move into virtual uh, world and data will be just overwhelming. And I think even if we think of uh, quantum healthcare or quantum computing in the future and the advances that is happening right now from all aspects, uh, I think it's, it's uh, I can't just say it more, uh, the opportunities will be even far greater uh, than prior to COVID-19. So I'm going to move to some of the questions that are addressed to me by the panel. And the first question is how to face the harsh experience requirements, years of experience and the job description, especially for students with no uh, job experience. Um, what I can just say to you is that, um, yes, the experience can be a plus, uh, but again, think of it. None of us is born expert. We're going to learn. I think the most important, if you don't have this experience, you should show them that you do have all other elements that will make you learn quickly um, and excel at your job. That's the best that you can do. Plus, if you have any um, uh, like experiences as a student, um, like any project that you, it shows uh, how valuable you are to them, then present it. That's very important. Um, again, some of the employers might actually ask you to lead a team or like do a project uh, before they hire you. So that's again, a very important uh, opportunity. You might look for those organizations that will give you this opportunity. Um, and that's where you, um, I wanna address the question, what are the main skills that need to be constantly trained? Um, remember that you have two aspects here. One is your technical skills and technical ability uh, to handle the data science uh, job. And the other aspect is the personal uh, traits. Um, this is very important. Of course, the technical ability and the advances in data science, you need to be on top of it. You have to attend courses, um, uh, workshops, whether it's online, face-to-face, -face. just keep abreast of all the developments and, and, and the technical aspects of data science. But what is very important is your personal development, like somebody who is developing himself in uh, like um, self-reflection, um, self-management, um, anger management, conflict resolution, um, the soft skills like communication, uh, collaboration, cooperation, uh, working in teams, working with teams, and working with different um, uh, um, nationalities, um, different people, uh, different cultures, uh, people with different values. 
these are the things that you need constantly to train yourself in. Because remember, you're actually growing. I mean, definitely, this is our human need. Uh, at one point, if you keep doing the same thing, um, you'll get bored and you might actually get burned out. And then you find yourself at crossroads, whether to continue or leave your job. But if you keep developing yourself and, uh, and arm yourself with lifelong learning skills, um, that will keep you moving the ladder and that will make you really progress. Even if you don't stay in the organization, once you get out of the organization, you, you are going to a higher level and you're going to a better job and better pay. That is very, very important. Um, another question is, what are the developing countries we should focus on for data science jobs? Um, the Gulf area, the uh, GCC countries. Um, they are having like uh, explosion in, in, uh, in data science. And uh, as you see the uh, projects in, in the uh, Gulf region, they definitely uh, are amazing. Um, in all um, uh, disciplines, uh, marketing, business, um, administration, um, uh, academia, uh, uh, clinical, um, they are so de developing here and the opportunities are just great. Uh, you can explore that. Um, countries in Southeast Asia, again, uh, lots of opportunities. And again, it, it's, it's even in the West because when you look at the fourth industrial um, uh, revolution that is taking place right now, um, data is at the heart of it. And they say here in Saudi Arabia, the, the data is um, the next oil or the, the future oil. So, um, you know, you can explore it anywhere. Uh, developing countries might be like a, a good place for you to start and uh, build your experience. Uh, but there's no harm also to um, like explore uh, your future in, in uh, highly developed countries, uh, West Europe or North America. Uh, the future is still very bright there. Um, I hope with this, it's um, you find. I hope that you find this uh, video useful, and uh, I wish you all the best. And I'm leaving my email uh, down below. And if you need any uh, help or advice, and if you want to have a Skype interview with me, if you want to have a Zoom, uh, whatever you um, think I gonna be helpful to you.